Hey everyone! So something a little different for this video, Christian from Lazy Devs is doing a tutorial series on writing a breakout game for Pico 8. And he asked me if I'd be interested in contributing to the series and writing the music. Christian mentioned that he'd like some title music and some shorter stingers and fanfares for when you complete a level. For this video, I'm going to write from start to finish the title music. So here we go. All right. So I don't have anything specific in mind of style of music or tempo. I'm just going to kind of roll with it here. I do know that for the title music, I'm going to work with a four channel texture. Title music is usually the best place for you to do four channel texture because you're not competing with sound effects. So we're going to have four channels here and I like to just start with some kind of drum beat. Uh, not because the comp composition should start with a drum beat but because I just need to get a sense for tempo and maybe through that I'll get an idea of what I want to do. Okay, so let's get a some kind of bass drum happening. And we'll just copy this all throughout the pattern. Okay. I think I want something maybe something slower. Um, something like kind of weird so let's just start with that and let's just add um, some kind of bass note and I'm going to make it fairly harsh all the sounds I've got some kind of like tetrisy idea I think in my head so and uh, oh, the other thing, I'm, I'm only going to use notes of the pentatonic scale. So if you haven't, if you don't know what the pentatonic scale is, then check out my tutorial videos on writing music with the pentatonic scale. And uh, I think I'm going to use the, I'll use the D sharp minor pentatonic scale. So uh, if you're looking down at your keyboard to get the D minor pentatonic scale, you can use the method that I describe in the tutorial videos or just put your finger on D and then just hit all of the notes to the right of it. So you're going to F, there's no note on F, there's a note on G, there's a note on H, and there's a note on K. And then uh, starting from one at the top of the keyboard, uh, go all the way through the numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So um, that's the note, those are the notes of the pentatonic scale. Um, actually, that maybe that will be a, a good place to start. Um, let's see if we can make a, a different pattern. Let's see what that sounds like with the drum beat. Okay, well, we need to make it uh, same tempo. Okay, we got to make 23 and 24 also the same tempo. Now, just for fun, let's see what it, that would sound like double time. So I'm going to make this half of 24, which is 12. Okay, that's too fast. So let's go back to 24. And let's just uh, kind of shape this a little bit and see if we can make it sound a little more interesting. So, so I've got, they're kind of like these patterns of five here and then the volume tails are kind of like patterns of four. Okay, let's see if we can maybe how about create a pattern of three here. 
What does that sound like? Okay, so now I think there needs to be something something in here just to fill out the, uh, the space. So let's create some kind of slide pattern. So something like this, and we'll make it instrument zero. What would that sound like? Stop the octave. So I just kind of picked the, these notes just because they were easy to find under my fingers. So let's try it. what happens again. So this time, this these ones are sliding up. What would happen if they slide down? Let's do another one. Make this one a little different. And then something really high. I just picked a random note here and let's slide it up. Let's see what that sounds like. We're going to loop this. That's sounding uh, all right. So now let's see if we can use these spaces for something. So let's take this note, I don't know, five, let's put it up high. And let's see what, what happened with an arpeggiator. So right now it's going to arpeggiate these four notes, but, um, but we def I definitely don't want it to arpeggiate C0 because it's going to sound too low. So I'm going to uh, just make this uh, D sharp three. All right, what does that sound like? Okay, and what can we do here? Something short, like um, maybe. something high. Yeah, and now this one, I think it'd be a good idea that it's in the key of D sharp minor pentatonic uh, because it is high and you might hear it kind of melodically. So if we want, we can experiment with different notes here. Although I kind of like the way it is. Okay, so now let's try to make this loop a little bit more interesting and we're going to take it and we're going to echo it in another channel and we're going to put it up the octave. And let's make it all one instrument and we'll make it quieter. And we, I don't want these sound effects so I'm going to get rid of those. And just like that. All right, let's see what that sounds like. sound as good as I thought. Uh, let's get rid of all this information just so we know that nothing's going to be playing there. And maybe it needs to be quieter. Maybe it should be echoed. Okay, I don't mind that. And just to give it some variety, I'm just going to change up the volumes here. Uh, I like putting sometimes the accents on the non-stressed beat, just to um, give it a little bit more of, of a swing. Okay. 
Um, and I want to try one more thing. Let's move it down the octave and see what that sounds like. I could play around with that all day, but let's just leave it for now. Okay, so as uh, so, I know we're I'm going to add some pitch information here using the D sharp minor pentatonic scale, and I'll definitely add some more pitch information here just to fill it out. But I'm guessing I'm probably going to take this and repeat it here. So. Uh, and this will probably be looped like that. Um, let's see what this sounds like. Okay, so here, something I'm going to change something. So it's going to be in a different key or a different bass line or, or something like that. But I know that uh, something is going to change at O2. Um, but for now, let's just focus on this and make this uh, sound more interesting. So let's go to 24 and I'm going to, let's pitch it up a little bit more and let's pick uh, instrument three. And I'm just going to take the top. Now I know I'm in D sharp minor pentatonic, and whatever notes are on my numbers and the QWERTY keyboard, those will all belong to the D sharp minor pentatonic scale. So I'm just going to kind of like play them randomly here. And there we go. That's, let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so I kind of, I don't mind this. And what happens if we just copy like that? Put this off the octave. Okay, um, now we've got this space here, so let's uh, kind of echo it like this and in a different instrument. Uh, and then these three down here, and then these three like that three like that okay now 
I'll go to this and copy these values over. Oops, uh, do I want to keep that? Uh, now nah, let's. All right, see what that sounds like. Okay, so this is okay. Um, now, I'm now. What sometimes what I do when I make certain embellishments like this is, I listen to it like that, and then I'll take it out and see if I miss it. Uh, like sometimes we add these embellishments, but they're not really noticeable. So I'll kind of test it like this. And if I don't think it's making that much of a difference. I'll maybe increase the volume so that I do hear a difference and see what that sounds like. this little noise snare like sound up the octave just so it cuts through a little bit more okay so um, that's good for a repeat. Um, oh, I wonder if there's something we can do in here. What about uh, some kind of slow rise, like uh, um, something like that, and we'll make it instrument seven. And then this one, I don't know, maybe let's make it go down. How about down and up, but higher up like that. Okay, so now I'll do a little um, work on the form. So I know when I move to pattern two, I, I don't need to rewrite very much. Uh, hopefully just a little subtle change will be enough to keep this composition moving forward. So let's copy this here. And what's the base, Chad? This is the base, okay. so. I'm going to move, copy this into 25. Oops, didn't copy. Into 25. And the only thing I'm going to change is the bass. Um, everything else is going to stay the same, uh, which I guess that means because this is doubling the bass, this might also change. But essentially, the only thing that I would like to change is the bass. And what I'm going to do what does this sound like again? Oops. Okay, so let's just get rid of all these sound effects. And um, what would happen if I just do this? Uh, actually, no, that might not work. So let's look at this pentatonic scale again. So what did I have? I had So let's make it go up here and uh, two, four, three, two, four, three, two, four, three, two.
Okay, so what I did is it's the same baseline except it's starting from a different, a uh, different um, pitch. Actually, so this will go up an octave. Yeah. And then this, how, how do we do this? I think this is just up the octave. So I'll select that. Shift I transposes things up an octave. And I'll do the same thing with this one. Oops, but I only want to copy the notes. And then select, whoops, select and up the octave. All right, so let's see what that sounds like coming from pattern one. Hmm. See that to me that doesn't really make that much of a difference. This this change to F sharp isn't as strong as I'd like. So maybe uh, another, I need to make a more drastic change. Maybe it's because the vol, oh, I think I know why. It's because the volume is, is, um, isn't right. Okay, let's try this again. I'll just make this one stronger just because I want that to be the okay let's see what that sounds like from the beginning still not a strong enough of a, a contrast. So what I think I'm going to do is take this echo and change what it's playing. So I really want F sharp down here. So what would happen if I really emphasize F sharp? up the octave no, I don't like that so I'll just uh, emphasize that F sharp more see now this is kind of the primary bass note now and this is now acting melodically rather than supporting the, the, the bass note. So what I might do is now is shift the, uh, I guess the, the pri my priority. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this the main voice and make this secondary so I've just done that by kind of swapping the volume values so that this is now kind of the primary baseline so I'll have to do the same thing here and I'll try to make it more interesting Okay, 
So now what I might do, I might do the same thing. Oh, see, I've made the mistake of adjusting pattern 23, not remembering that I'm using it already. This happens all the time when I'm, when I'm working in Pico 8. So um, actually, but this might not be a bad thing. What I'm going to do is I want to copy this to 26. And now this is going to be 26. And I think I might just make this D sharp. And for this, I'm going to do the same thing and just make this a little quieter. So now this is now this is what the beginning is going to sound like. Okay. Now let's see what would happen. Uh, so now this, these are all both pretty low. And so this is getting a little muddled uh, in playback. Can't quite hear it. So I'm going to hear, listen to see what it sounds like moving this up the octave. Yeah, I can tell already that's, that's uh, going to sound better. So let's just do that for all of them. So now I'm hearing it. Um, what I think I'll do is maybe write two or three more sections to this tune. And it's only title music, so it doesn't have to be that long because people usually just skip ahead and and want to get right to playing the game. So it doesn't need to be that long, but it's nice to try and add as much variety as you can. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, if you watch the videos on compositional form and development, we kind of have this A, A, B thing happening. So I'm going to uh, continue A, A, B, A, A, B, and I'm gonna put our loop back here, except the second time A, A, B happens, there's gonna be something different. So for now, let's just copy this here. And I think what I'll do is, is write a melody something a little bit more melodic, maybe in the space of, of this channel here. So let's take um, 22. Uh, actually, let's just replace 22 here with what I said with 27. And this will be maybe 27 or 28. We'll see how it goes. And this will be 29. And then everything for now will remain the same and we'll, we'll see how it sounds. So um, let's uh, get to 27 and maybe something, everything so far is fairly short. You see lots of fives and everything is um, moving per on a per row um, pacing. So let's do something a little bit more long and flowing uh, in 27. And let's uh, use an instrument, maybe five. Are we using five very much? No, we're not using five very much. So let's see uh, what happens here. And I'm only going to use the, the numbers on the on the QWERTY keyboard here. So, so kind of randomly, not thinking too much about it. Oh, of course we got a, uh, what's our tempo, 24. OK, 
Okay, so what does it need? Um, what if we added a, just all vibrato? And it definitely, yeah, I know I said I wanted more of something flowing, but I think it needs, yeah, more of a, more breaks. Uh, and something not in time with the the drum pattern. So something that's a little bit more syncopated with the drum pattern. So rather than all these notes changing with the groups of four, uh, we're going to uh, just change that up a little bit. So let's move this back. Oops. Oh yeah, that worked. Okay. okay and I think I can tell already what I want is for this to be quieter because it's kind of getting in the way so I'm going to take 24 and copy that into 30 oh, didn't copy 24 into 30 and everything's going to come down Okay, what else could I do here? Maybe uh, play with the instruments. So let's try instrument seven. Not sure I like that. So hmm, let's try instrument. Did this even change? I thought I changed this to 27. Oh, I didn't even change this to 27. Maybe that's why I'm having a hard time with it. Let's see the transition. Oh, I meant 30. That's what I meant. Actually, I think I want it to change here. So, and we'll make this 29 and we'll make this 30. All right, let's see what that sounds like. Okay, and we could even maybe have another, maybe another bass line. So let's copy this here, and we're going to copy 23 into 31. And let's change these bass notes to G sharp and then yeah, let's see what that sounds like yeah 
yeah so I like the change here so we have to decide if because um, what we could do is we could take this and rather than it staying on G sharp we could maybe move it to A sharp and then we could take this section and kind of develop it a little bit more and the other thing is I think it needs a, a different melody here so um, let's try something um, I'm going to take this melody put it into 28 And all of the notes of the pentatonic scale, I'm going to move them up by step. So if this is F sharp, then this is going to be, uh, it's going to turn into G sharp, G F sharp to G sharp. Um, G sharp is going to become A sharp. Let's see if I can do this quickly. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too painful to watch. Uh, and I probably made some mistakes, but hopefully it sounds all right. All right, I think it's a good start. Uh, let's uh, just play around with it a little bit. I think maybe rhythmically, uh, we can we can change it up like it's started all both of these patterns start with the two blanks so let's uh, I don't know let's move it back one and change where the spacing is like that and then I don't know let's move this and I don't know let's move this And yeah, let's see what that sounds like. Okay, uh, I like it. I think it should be, instead of it kind of moving downwards, it should be kind of moving upwards just to kind of increase the tension throughout the phrase. So let's see how we can do that. Um, where is this note? So this is going up. Let's uh, hold on to the hold on this note. Uh, actually, let's save this note for here. Now we just fix the, the volume tails. Whenever there's a new note in the phrase, I'll give them the higher volume value just to stress them. And then any notes after that, I'll give a lower volume just to create the volume tail. So the, this is changing from F sharp to A sharp. So I'll put four here and then this note is repeated. So I'll put three and there's the volume tail. Here's a new note, so that'll be four, new note, four, new note, four, the volume tail, and then there's a new note here, so four. That's kind of how I decide sometimes how to give uh, the volume tails and the, um, the values. That's cool. Um, it loses a little bit of whoops. Loses a little bit of energy in here, I think. Yeah, 
yeah, there's too much a a sharp. So let's try that. Okay, nice. I'm going to just fix one thing in these melodies that's bothering me is these notes here they cut off too abruptly. So I'm just going to copy them and then create a bit of a volume tail and then uh, do a fade out here so that they just have a, I don't know, a little bit more of a resolution. Yeah, and I'll do the same thing uh, with this guy. Yeah, I think that'll do. And I think I'm going to stop there for now. I mean, there's lots of other little tiny things that I'd like to go in and polish, but I think for the sake of having a as short and concise a tutorial video as I can, I think I'm going to stop it right there. And for the next video, I'll be tackling some of the, the stingers and the fanfares that Christian was talking about.